This is an 8 character alphanumeric LED display. It has 8 buttons for controlling it. It's mounted between two pieces of green acrylic on an oak base. It has a USB port in the back to connect to a PC. I've configured it to show time, the RSS feed from the Make Magazine blog, or weather. If I select time, it shows the current time with a PM indicator on the lower right and seconds flashing on the upper right. I can exit the time display and go into the Make RSS feed. It shows the headline of the latest blog article. Whenever the article changes, it sounds an alert and flashes all four indicators for one minute. If I press button number 8, it pops up a browser window on my PC with the blog article. Now I'll exit the RSS feed display and go to the weather display. I can choose either the current temperature in my hometown Bedford or the current wind chill. In short, this can display virtually any data from a computer's hard drive or the internet. All that functionality is implemented on the PC in a C-sharp application. Here's how it gets configured. We start with a top-level menu. We add a child app, label it Timer, and set its type to Data Viewer. We add a data item and call it day hh colon mm. It will show time, date time data. The format is ddd space hh colon mm. That's a Microsoft.NET date format. We set it to refresh every three seconds. We also convert it to uppercase. We could display in lowercase, but this is since this is a 14 segment LED display, lowercase characters don't always look good. To turn on an indicator for PM, we need another data item that gets the AM PM indicator. So we set up another date time data item with a date format of TT. To flash an indicator every second, we make one last data item that gets the tenths of a second and updates every half second. The format field sets what text is displayed on the LEDs. It uses .NET's string format for specification. By default, it shows data item 0. We'll leave it that way. To make the top right LED flash every second, we type in a C-sharp expression that evaluates to true or false. We check whether data item 2, the tenths of a second, is less than 5. Since data item 2 is updated twice a second, this expression will be triggered twice a second, and it will be true one time and false the next. For the PM indicator, we type in a C-sharp expression that compares data item 1, the AM-PM indicator, to the string PM. Notice we need to surround the strings in quotes. Now we'll do something more advanced, the RSS feed. We create another data viewer application, label it make, and add a data item. We set the description to make blog and the data type to XML. We enter the URL of the make blog's RSS feed. We set the internet cache to expire after one minute. We type in an XPath to extract the item headline from the XML that the RSS feed returns. And we check for a new headline every minute. To make the LEDs flash when there's a new headline, we do a trick similar to what we did with the time. We create a date time data item that gets the tenths of a second and updates twice a second. Then we set the LED indicator to an expression that is true if the current headline is different from the previous headline and the tenths of a second are less than five. Since the data item for the headline is updated every minute, the current headline and previous headline will only be different for one minute. I've extended .NET's format specification to allow me to specify the previous value of a data item. I copy and paste that expression into all four indicator fields so that all four LEDs will flash. 
I can tell the app to play a sound when the headline changes. I enter a C-sharp expression that tests whether the current headline is different from the previous headline and, if it is, returns the name of a sound file to play. Finally, I can set what happens when the user presses a button. For button 7, I tell it to execute a command and I give it the URL of the blog. So, when I press button 7, a browser will pop up with the latest blog entry. Finally, we'll set up the weather. We'll make it a child menu item. Under that, we'll make a launcher. Menus let you scroll through items with the left or right buttons. Launchers have up to seven applications under them, so you can select them directly with any one of the buttons. It's seven instead of eight, since the leftmost button is for exiting. Under the Bedford launcher, we make a temperature data viewer. We set its data type to text and enter the URL for my town at weather.gov. The page we get back will be in XML, but I thought it would be easier to parse it as text. Since this is text instead of XML, I enter a regular expression instead of an XPath to extract the temperature. For the text to display on the LEDs, I type an abbreviation of my town's name and write justify the temperature number. Finally, we create another data viewer for the wind chill. It's the same as the viewer for the temperature, except that the regular expression extracts a different piece of data. I hope you found the demo interesting. Thanks for watching.